Howdy, folks. Welcome back to another edition of uh, Pirate Sports Chat. This week, we have men's and women's tennis with us. Joining us is head coach Chris Ketchum, along with uh, women's tennis player Nicole Knickerbocker and men's tennis player Nick Tran. Thanks so much for being a part of this, you guys. Um, Chris, let's start with you. Uh, you know, for those that uh, maybe are not totally familiar with the OCC tennis program, give us a basic overview of, of how you like to run your tennis program and, and what, do you, what do you expect out of your athletes and how would you describe your coaching style? What kind of coach do you think you are? Uh, and, and what has been the key to the success of these programs? You guys have won some state championships on the women's side. Women, men, men's program has been, always been very good. Uh, tell me a little bit about, about this tennis program. Um, uh, well, there's, I think there's four questions in one of them, Tony. What a really making me think. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, we've been very fortunate, uh, over the last, uh, several years, uh, to have really good programs on both sides. And, uh, you know, um, uh, I always say that it's really the, our student athletes that are really the ones that are doing all the work and, uh, should be the one that, uh, should get all the laurels and uh, con congratulations, but uh, I'm just the one kind of uh, steering the ship in the right direction. Um, uh, but one thing about me with me and my coaching is I definitely like to be organized and uh, I like my, you know, I try and run my programs very structured. Um, and I think that helps a lot of our student athletes where, um, you know, they, they know what they need to do in terms of warming up and everything. And that always kind of stays the same whether uh, it's the first practices of the season or it's the practice before the state championship match, you know? Um, so I think that's important. Um, so, you know, and also, uh, you know, I really don't like downtime in practice. Um, uh, the only downtime I'm okay with is if we're taking a break and getting water. Um, so efficiency is really important to me, um, especially when we only have a certain amount of time for practice. So I really like to keep things going. And in order to do that, you really have to prepare and think ahead of time about uh, how you're going to do practice and how you're going to set it up and everything um, just to make sure you get everything that uh, you know you want in the practice as well as um, everything uh, kind of ends at uh, when it's supposed to end so we can let our athletes kind of go and uh, do what they need to do after practice so I think that's important too. Um, in terms of uh, you know expectations of my players um, I really what I expect our athletes to, to do I expect them to be committed um, I expect them to have a desire to work hard and also a desire to improve. And uh, really what I'm looking for with that stuff is that they show up and attend practice regularly. And when they're at practice, um, they're working hard to get better to improve, you know. Uh, but I also, wanna, I also want, want the athletes to have some fun as well. Um, uh, so uh, that probably leads me into the other, um, I think one of the other questions you asked in terms of what kind of coach I am. Um, I kind of consider myself a player's coach. Um, uh, I try and provide, like, I feel like my, the goal of me and my objective of our program is to provide the best experience possible for our student athletes. Um, I think that's very important. And I don't want it to be a burden to our student athletes of them having to participate on the team or having to commit time or having to go to practice every day or a couple of days a week. I never want that or that to be a burden or them to feel like uh, it's a burden on their time. So um, uh, I always try and make it worthwhile for them to be at, be at practice. And I also try and make it fun. And I, I try and make it uh, enjoyable um, uh, as well. So I think all of that uh, is important. Um, and I think the last question um, uh, was something about, uh, you know, what was, what was the, the last question? Just talking about basically the success of the program over the years. Just what do you think has been the key to it? Well, I think one of the important things is is, uh, is building a team culture, which uh, sometimes can be a little difficult to do uh, with our sport because it's a little more individualized. And I grew up playing a lot of team sports. And so that was kind of really ingrained in me. And so that's a lot of what my coaching philosophy is about. And I try and build it uh, every new season that we have a, a bunch of new men and women If I can do that, then I feel like, uh, you know, uh, we're building that team team culture. And with that comes uh, success. Very good. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate that. So, uh, Nicole, your turn. Story time for you. I know that you were a part of, uh, you know, one of the greatest sports programs we've ever had on any sport here at Orange Coast College. You were on a, on a women's tennis team that went undefeated and had a team state championship, uh, an individual state championship from your teammate, a doubles championship. Like, you name it, we did it. So, um, tell me a little bit about your experience back in 2019. What was that like? And, uh, and what's your fondest memory of that, of that season? Anything that kind of pops in your mind? 
Um, well, it was amazing to be part of that team. and Everybody was so nice and we all got along great, which is always amazing. And I think my fondest memory, well, I have like two. The first one is when our team won state, uh, we had like all, I think there were eight matches going on and I was like the closest one to finishing to if I won my match, then we would win state. And I remember the last point I served it and then I got an approach on, hit it right down the line. And then right after that, my whole team rushed into me and we all like hugged and cheered and everything. And it was just the best feeling in the world. And everybody was so happy. And a lot of the guys showed up too, which was great. So it was a lot of support from everywhere. And then my second fondest memory is probably winning the doubles state individuals with my partner, Miri, at the time. We played against two great, amazing opponents. And it was a great match. I think it went three sets. And we really battled it out. We had like some terrible points, some terrible games, but also like very great and really hardworking points, which was always amazing. We tried our best, we stayed focused, but we had a lot of fun during the whole entire time and everybody was there supporting us. A lot of the guys, a lot of the girls, all the coaches were there too. So it was really fun. Very cool. Very cool. Congratulations. That's uh, it's fun to be a part of that for sure. So uh, Nick, like Nicole, you're, you're back here for at OCC for a third year. Thanks to, Thanks to the fun, uh, everlasting joy of COVID for, for this year. So uh, tell me a little bit about how you've been able to stay in shape and stay sharp for this upcoming season with all these distractions that have been going around with all the COVID and, and being away from your teammates. And, uh, and, and, and a second part of that question is how excited are you to finally go see that new tennis center and be a part of what we have here at Orange Coast College now? Well, uh, when the first, when the lockdown first uh, started, uh, really wasn't as motivated as before because we had no idea how how this, situ this situation would escalate, if it would get better, if it would get worse. So most of the times I would just be just at home on my computer most of the time. But like as the, as the months went on, I started to have a little bit more motivation. Coach started sending out texts and stuff. So I started getting in shape by myself at home by doing some uh, workouts like calisthenics, which is a body weight workout. And then Later on, when stuff started to open up more, uh, my friend and I, uh, Nero, Chris Nero, he's on the team. Yeah. We would go, we would go hit, uh, hit every single day at uh, different courts because some courts we would get kicked out of. But we just started playing as much as possible, drilling, doing running drills with each other to get back into shape, into this, into this very point. And um, that's pr practically how we got into, sh like, I practically been getting into shape and second question um i was super stoked to see the new tennis facility because it's been talked that uh we've been that we were going to get a new tennis facility and didn't happen until this year and when we saw like little teasers of it everyone was stoked i was incredibly stoked to get on the new courts play them looked absolutely beautiful with the new like canopies uh set up in the areas the new court layouts colors of the courts too absolutely incredible and i appreciate it and um with the new season up coming up um uh, so far unsure but what if it does happen and when it does happen i'll bring my a game i'm really happy to get to get going again get playing again absolutely looking forward to seeing you guys out there for sure now chris i've i actually nominated a bright orange hard court uh since we're orange coast college so yeah, i got the our new courts in, in my background right now i think that would look really sharp but uh, nobody comes to me for suggestions so um anyway so back to you chris as far as uh uh again back to your kind of a coaching thought um you and i talked a little bit about uh, your history and you're growing up playing tennis and and also playing soccer and how much soccer has been an important part of your life and you mentioned that a little bit in our interview earlier. So kind of talk to me about coaching the, you know, the men's soccer program that you do right now, you help out with the program and, and how that helps, I guess, coordinate, not coordinate, but like help you uh, coach soccer and tennis at the same time. What are some of the things you do from soccer that you can carry over into, into the tennis courts? Well, um, uh, you know, I learned quite a bit uh, with the coaches that I currently coach with out there uh, in the fall with soccer. Um, I have two very, very qualified coaches, and uh, that goes a long way because I'm there to uh, basically experience and hear everything that uh, 
that they talk about uh, as well as, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily in front of their players, but also, uh, you know, uh, kind of on the sidelines and uh, um, when it's just uh, the coaching staff. So there's quite a lot that's talked and said about as well as uh, what's said to the players from uh, those other two coaches, coaches being Kevin Smith and Glenn Strachan. And they are very, very knowledgeable in terms of soccer, but also in terms of coaching and coaching, uh, you know, young individuals. And there's quite a bit that I can take from that, that I have taken from that. And I apply it to uh, my own uh, coaching philosophy or my own coaching strategies with men's and women's tennis. And uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same sport. A lot of the same coaching principles can apply uh, regardless of whatever sport that uh, you're talking about. And it's also being, being a good leader as well. Um, uh, so they're real, two really important people uh, that I really enjoy working with that I've learned a lot from them um, at OCC. And, um, you know, that's also a big part of why I'm still kind of uh, doing that because I really enjoy both of those coaches and I enjoy spending time with them as well as uh, working with them and coaching with them. Um, uh, but, you know, the nature of both sports are really completely different. I mean, one sport uh, with soccer, you play with your feet and it's more of a team sport. Um, so you don't necessarily coach people one-on-one. -on -one. You really coach people as a whole group. And that's the difference with tennis, where tennis, obviously, you're using your hands and your arms, right, and your shoulders. Um, uh, and it's more of an individual sport, right? So a lot of times you're coaching people more kind of one-on-one -on -one about what they need to improve in order to win their individual match. So there's a lot of differences. But uh, like I said, I've been able to learn quite a bit that I can apply from both sports. Um, because what it comes down to, it's all about uh, being able to get better at competing and get, uh, getting better at finishing matches off and winning. And you do the same thing regardless of whatever sport you're talking about. So those are the things that uh, when I compare both of those sports that are really different is a lot of what um, I learn from each and I apply to each, whether it's soccer to tennis or tennis to soccer. So uh, that's uh, really, really important. It's it's, it's hard. Uh, a lot of, lot of players, I've had a lot of players in my program over the years here at OCC that are great players, that are talented players, um, but really they're only good in practice. When it comes down to winning and winning matches, they just can't figure it out and can't find a way to compete well and win matches. And it's a big deal. And uh, that's something that, uh, that you learn through competing a lot and playing a lot of tournaments and uh, playing a lot of matches or uh, if it's another sport, uh, competing and playing in that particular sport. So, very cool, very cool. So, uh, Nicole, your turn now. Another another question for you involving goals. You know, after what you did went through your freshman year, um, and and a little bit of the break with 2020. What are some of the goals you have coming into this upcoming season? Uh, I know, I know. Uh, you know, being a, a state champion and all that in the double side. That there's some high aspirations. Um, so, tell me a little bit about what are what are your plans for 2021 and. And maybe even beyond that, what are some of your career goals uh, beyond the sport of tennis? Um, probably for my goal in this upcoming season would be hopefully for our team to win state again, because that was a lot of fun. It's just a great experience. And hopefully winning state individuals in singles and in doubles again with whoever my doubles partner will be this upcoming year. And my goal as in the future after SEC, um, hopefully transfer to a four year and play there. I'm kind of thinking Sonoma State because I really love the school and the campus and my friend played tennis there and she said you would love the program and the coaches and everything so very cool good, good luck to all that stuff for sure so uh, Nick it's time time for you to suck up to the coach here a little bit so uh, you know we all know Chris we, we know I've known him for about 15 years now he is like the most annoyingly nice guy on the planet um, tell me a little bit about about Chris as a coach what has he taught you during your time at Orange Coast College uh, both in tennis and, and, and even in life. Uh, yeah, coach is incredibly nice, um, but it's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> I would say annoying, but it's appreciated a lot because uh, you don't get a lot of coaches like Ketchum, to be honest. He was probably one of the best coach I've had like throughout my tennis journey. And that's saying a lot because I've actually – had a good, a good amount of coaches and some of them weren't the greatest. Some of them didn't listen to the players like he does. A lot of them just went based off of their agenda and not what we believed was good for the team. And uh, yeah, that's a lot. Of, that's really appreciated. And the main thing that he really taught us is that 
you're there to give it your all, there's the moment you give up, you've practically already lost because you have no, you have no drive to continue after that because you, you have no, you have no motivation because the whole point is to give it your all, no matter how tough the situation is and how, how behind you are in points and games, just look at it, just look at it. Like you just started the match and go from there. Don't worry about like other stuff. Don't worry about like uh, the, the other opponents cheering their teammates on. Don't worry about other stuff happening around the area around you. Just focus strictly on your match and then work your ass off to get to where you want to be. And don't complain because that's not going to get you anywhere. But he's probably just taught, taught like me and like the team that I've seen, like just to give it your all no matter how bad the situation is, because in the end, you, you appreciate, you appreciate it that you tried instead of you just giving up entirely. It's like you would want to finish a match knowing that you actually worked your butt off to, to get where you want to be instead of, yeah, I just gave up. Like I didn't care. I just threw every point. Like it's not a good feeling. So that's practically what I've learned. And you could transition that like greatly into like life too. Like if you want that promotion, you got to work, you got to work your butt off to get where you want to be, to get that promotion, to get that raise instead of just not trying, doing very minimal work and then not getting anywhere, working a nine to five job all the time. But yeah, that's practically what he's taught and it's helped a lot. Awesome. Well said, Nick. Thank you. Uh, so here's kind of a fun one to wrap this thing up for everybody here. So uh, if, if I gave everyone an opportunity to play a set of tennis against any tennis player you can think of, you know, past, history, future, anything like that, who would it be? What, what famous tennis player would you have a, have, have a match with? And then where would you play it? Would you do it on the, on the clay courts at Roland Garros? Would you play it on the grass courts at Wimbledon? Hard courts at Arthur Ashe? Like, what would it be? Let's, let's start with you, Nicole. Pick a, pick a tennis player and a spot. Um, I would have to say the 2002 Serena Williams when she was in her prime at the U.S. Open Center. Yeah, Park. very cool. Now, now, why is that? Is it just the uh, just the way she played back then? She was a, she was a monster back then for sure. Yeah, I like obviously she's so much better than me. But we kind of have the same style. We both hit hard, so and we like to hit winners and big serves and everything and finish the point quick. So I feel like it'd be a lot like a really fun match just to play against her. Very cool. Very cool. Nick, how about yourself? Yeah, I would actually love to play Dominic Team uh, on uh, French Open, which is the Roland Garros center court because of the way his play style is and how I try to play like him. Uh, just give him my all and everything, just like how he does. Very cool. All right, Chris, your turn too, man. Let's go old school. <laughs> who, who, who are you picking? Well, I'm not going too old school, but, uh, you know, I'm uh, thinking about this question. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of great players, uh, both men and women. And I actually think Serena would probably have been my number two, for sure. Yeah. Um, a great one. Um, uh, um, uh, but uh, I have to go with uh, the king of clay, man. I'd have to play Rafa, Rafael Nadal, on center court at Roland Garros. Uh, he's won 13. I just won uh, one in last uh, September, and uh, I really – I have to see how much spin he actually puts on that forehand. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool for sure. For me, it would be Johnny Mack. I'd, I'd want to play Johnny Mack on the, on the grass courts at, uh, at Wimbledon just so I could watch him just lose his mind for five minutes in front of a judge. I think that would be absolutely killer, and I'd just sit there and laugh at him while he beats me 6-0, 6-0. So, uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for being a part of this today. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and – uh, fingers crossed we're back in the spring doing this stuff. You know, let's do this for real. Let's go play on those nice courts and uh, have a great holiday. And thanks again for being a part of this day. I really appreciate it. Good. Thanks, Tony. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you inviting us. And um, uh, thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Nick. Absolutely.